Welcome to the 5 News Vault. It's an online series where we look at the news where you live over the years. In our first segment, we turn back 20 years to a day when America was under attack. It's a moment that will live in infamy and a moment we promise never to forget. Now be sure to download the 5 News app, subscribe to our YouTube page, and follow our Roku and Fire TV channels for future 5 News Vault episodes. After this week's tragic terrorist acts, Americans are coming together as they show support and provide assistance to one another. Locally, the scene is much the same. In the Northwest Arkansas Mall, patrons are bringing in shirts and socks that will be sent to police officers and firefighters in New York and Washington. At Springdale High School, students are making bracelets with various colors reflecting hope, sorrow, and American pride. Southern Mortgage Company in both Fort Smith and Fayetteville are handing out red, white, and blue ribbons. Employees say it's the least they can do. I just felt like it was a thing to do, the appropriate thing to do at this time so everybody could come together, make them realize what's going on right now, and that everybody just needs to be pulling together right now to try to make it through this. And at Northside High School, a sign outside bears the words, God bless America. Inside, students are collecting money for the Red Cross, already over $500. Gloria Hodges in Fort Smith is donating 144 photo dolls to help kids through this difficult time. I want to do my part in helping those that, that lost a loved one because I, I really care for people. I love children. They are precious. And uh, this is a great country, and that's the American way. You help your neighbor. And all across northwest Arkansas and the River Valley, hundreds turned out for memorial services at local churches. Across the country, stores are running out of flags as Americans stock up on the ultimate symbol of freedom. And thousands are pouring into Red Cross shelters and United Blood Services to donate the gift of life, blood. Back at the Northwest Arkansas Mall, Cargill Poultry is passing out balloons and accepting donations for the New York Emergency Relief Fund. These are just a few of the ways Americans are showing something that many believe is long overdue, a united front and a renewed sense of patriotism. Boxes of ammunition were flying off the shelves at Mountain Man Supplies and Pawn Store, an estimated 10 to 20,000 rounds worth. Just as we've seen people lining up at the gas stations and lining up at the grocery stores, uh, you know, you get four loaves of bread instead of one loaf of bread. Well, they were getting eight or ten boxes of ammo instead of one or two, uh, just being prepared. Uh, overall, everybody is just falling together and coming together in, a, in, a, in the good old American way to support everything and everybody. And I think everybody just wants to, to be an American and do their part, uh, you know, if, if the situation arises. Uh. Gober says he sold so much ammunition he'll have to order more and they just finished stocking up for hunting season. While gun stores throughout the country saw an increase in sales, Kmart, on the other hand, decided to empty out their gun cases and not sell any guns or ammunition. They uh, thought that there might be a panic situation uh, you know, across the nation, and, and we just were trying to be a responsible corporation and make sure we didn't uh, contribute to that. But the store did lose some business from customers like this woman who ended up going to Mountain Man instead to buy shells. I could see like a high powered rifle or something like that, but just for a shotgun shell, I thought it was a little bit extreme. Obviously, you know, we would love to have the sales, but uh, then once again, you know, we, we felt like it was the right thing to do. When something like that happens, you just don't realize all the implications that it's going to have in your daily lives. So. But both stores say while the emotions of Tuesday's attacks are still running high, People's buying patterns are back to normal. In Fayetteville, I'm Sylvan Soloway, 5 News. Delta flight number 4618 to Atlanta was the first flight to leave the Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport since airspace reopened. This plane got off the ground without a problem, but several others were canceled or oversold. I think just getting the airplanes where they need to go, uh, that's what the primary holdup is at this point. Passengers who did make it out said Tuesday's tragedy will not scare them from flying. I'm not concerned. I think the airlines have done a great job in terms of safety. Obviously, there were some uh, pitfalls, but no, I, I have no personal fear of safety. I fly almost every week, and I, I never think about that. It's just what I do, so I do it. I'm not afraid to fly, and I want to get up in the air and land safely to get whatever jitters I do have out. Airport officials say flights are slowly getting back to normal. 
but they say flying will never be like it was before. We'll see some changes, most definitely relating to security and possibly even scheduling because of the longer time it's going to take to deal with security issues, but we'll just have to wait and see what develops. Airport police say they've beefed up security three times stronger than it was before Tuesday. So I was asking them up front about what the new security measures were. Those are very good, so I have no problems with it at all. Well, probably the days of uh, getting to the airport 20 minutes before your uh, flight takes off are over. So it's going to be a lot more, uh, lot more pre-planning and uh, getting to the airport earlier. Everybody has a sense of numbing and anger and depression that's part of normal reaction. Glued to their television sets, people couldn't believe what they were seeing. But for part of the public, losing touch with reality comes easy. Max Baker is a Fort Smith adult psychiatrist. He says while emotions will run high for everyone, people with a history of mental problems may be catapulted into a deep depression. They may be become acutely disturbed uh, related to this. Baker says he was forced to medicate a patient who couldn't cope with what she was seeing. She wasn't able to interpret or, or work through the thought processes, even with a lot of support. Dr. Baker says there are signs to look for if you believe someone you know is having trouble. The signs include increased emotional state, increase in depression, and trouble sleeping, including nightmares. The main thing you need to do is communicate with people, people you love, people you feel comfortable about, people you're supportive with, your minister, your neighbor, to talk about this. And in, in doing so, uh, you, you tend to externalize the feelings that you, if you keep inside, are the ones that are going to haunt you in the night. Dr. Baker's office, can I help you? More importantly, the doctor says don't try to diagnose yourself with a mental illness. He also adds if you think your loved one is suffering, seek help immediately. In Fort Smith, I'm Lydia Joseph, 5 News. It was a terrible, it was a terrible disaster. For Georgia Milam, the attacks on America seem all too familiar. She once worked in the Empire State Building before it was struck nearly 60 years ago by a military plane. It was a cloudy, dreary day, and uh, everybody was sort of relaxed because there was uh, very little activity in the uh, observatory and uh, people were just going about their business. And, uh, the plane came around the building and struck the building on the 34th Street side, and it was so sad that there were so many people killed. A native Arkansan, Mila moved to New York to be near her husband of only four months, who was in the Navy. She says she loved her job as an elevator operator in the city's grandest structure. Oh, I enjoyed every minute of the time that I worked there. I enjoyed... Uh, meeting the people, I saw new people, uh, a lot of celebrities, and uh, it, it was just a real pleasure. We called it the building. When we said the building, everybody knew what we meant, and uh, we never called it the Empire State Building. Milan became very close with the other girls and remembers one girl who nearly lost her life in the crash. The young girl that fell the 86 floors, she did recover. We didn't think she would. But she did recover. And Milam also says she knows what victims and families are going through. So I can understand the feeling of people now. I can really, that was an accident. And um, uh, what they're going through now, I can understand their fear. In Greenwood, Amy DeLant, 5 News.